Hello everyone, this is Alex, and today we are doing some harmonic writing. I'm going to be presenting a little melody that I composed, and then I'm going to harmonize it with three different options. First thing I would say to consider while choosing some harmonies for your melody is to have a great bass line. If the bass line and the melody are complementary, have a certain symmetry between them at some points, it should already sound good and the chords you decide to put in afterwards will only vary the color depending on which one you choose, but the music should already sound good. So let's play the melody. So quite a simple melody. We basically have two times a repeated phrase here, and then the third time it repeats, it goes elsewhere. Uh, the peak of the melody is the F here, and then it modulates and introduces the B natural here uh, for the end for the ending part. So let's start with my first ideas about this this melody. The most obvious one to have this B uh, G minor chord. but then going to somewhere else. We could go, this is a E flat seven, but we could go somewhere else. That's a D minor on a F, but I do like the seven for this first harmonization. To the E flat seven. And then we could go down to a D minor seven. And come back. This would make like kind of a fifth degree back to the the G minor but I do like this also this is the F major we add in for the third chord and then you can repeat it the same So we have two times G minor, E flat 7, and F. I would go and add in the, the, the third degree of uh, G minor, which is the B flat. And then from here, we kind of want to move a little bit more onto uh, other chords. Maybe start moving towards our new mode with the natural B. So on this note, here I want to go on to a C major. So we could do for this note the B flat, then here uh, G minor 7, and on to a C major. The fact that we have this create a little bit more movement in the harmonic progression since we only had have a little bit more jumps we have a jump of a fourth in the in the, the bass line so this gives a little bit more energy so I would do again another jump of fourth we call this an harmonic march uh, it just makes the the music feels like it's modulating it's going it's going somewhere so B flat G minor 7 C major F major to break the harmonic march of fourth. I would add in the A minor here, instead of going back to a C major chord, which we already had just before. And then maybe a D minor here. Ending on an E minor here, which make a nice cadence, uh, kind of a link uh, with our uh, new tonality. Uh, so we'd say it's a kind of a cadence moving towards E minor. Only thing, only thing I don't like here is the parallel fifths. Add in a little bit more movement in the bass line. Just 
just going on to the F here. Allow me to have a third here. And to end the phrase uh, by doing an opposite direction. So let me play this full excerpt for you. So I like this first one. I would say it's very smooth uh, modulation between the first part and the second part. Basically go from G minor to uh, to E minor, which is not the, the, the smoothest modulation. But the fact that we use these, these notes on the bass line two times, and then start jumping around, make this little section feel like we're we're going somewhere and we the, the fact that we use the the fourth uh, makes it smoother fourths are a really good way to do uh, far away modulations because you can really end up on any chord so the second one I want to start right away on the E major I like the movement of sixth with the D, E, N, like this. So I want to do this with my bass line. I could add in a little syncopation maybe here. It could sound well, but I'm just gonna stick with my D minor on F chord. And then the A minor. I like the progression from the A minor to the B flat. We have this chromatism effect. And also the movement between the, the root note of the, the A to the diminished fifth below is interesting to me. again go on the B flat major. I could do the parallel thirds for here. Since we presented so much movement, just a little bit more predictability will smoothen the discourse at this point. B flat major, D minor. C. Then maybe the, the F major with the A on the bottom. And since I want to break the gap between the first phrase, which is more dissonant, and the second one, which is more predictable, then now I should start uh, having chords in the first inversion, for instance, or first or second. So let's say the F on the A. The C on the E. And then instead of finishing on the E minor like I did in the first one, I would finish on the G major, which creates a brighter cadence. Now I very much like the second one. It's kind of balanced, even though we have this A to D sharp, the diminished fifth in the melody can be really noticeable. But just the fact that we have this simple melody over, and then afterwards the harmony becomes a little bit more predictable. And towards the end, uh, we have a little surprise when we have the G major as well. The cadence is a little bit different. We have also these two chords in first inversion. 
So I like this one quite a bit. Let's see the third one now. Now for this last progression, I want to try something a little bit different. I want to, the beginning to be a little bit smoother and then to create a lot of movement uh, in the second part. And for this one, I really wanted to have the E minor seven flat five chord, which is the Tristan chord from Wagner's opera, Tristan und Isolt. I think it's a cool chord. Going on to D minor. And then back to the F major, uh, but on the first inversion. I like this chord, it's kind of the third degree uh, in D minor. But uh, the fact that it's on the A, give it this sense like it's a fifth degree. And that's the F, it's gonna resolve uh, down onto the E. But here we don't resolve it. And then we could bring it back here, but uh, since it's the third time we present the, the, the phrase, I want to already uh, create a surprise. And I want to try this, I want to go up onto the D major chord on its first inversion, which is the T, the F sharp. And now I want to go up uh, chromatically. This one creates a seventh. And then this one creates a sixth. We can even go up. Uh, this brings us to a third. Could we go here and create a second? Yes, with a major seven chord. And now we have two chords to end this madness. A G minor maybe. And then a E minor. This sounds cool, but I want to try and finish with something even weirder. So we have the C major 7th, the G minor. Oh, this is B minor in its second inversion with the F sharp at the bass. We had this the F sharp earlier with the D major chord. This is a very dark chord, very dark ending. Uh, you might not want to put this in like a happy pop song, but like for a movie scene where you want things to be suspended, we have the chord in its uh, second inversion. And yes, it does remind us of the earlier F sharp as well, creating a kind of a strange resolution. Let's listen to it now. Yeah, this is definitely my favorite. Um, the fact that we have uh, this more predictable beginning uh, with the E, D, A, E, D, A, two times, and then this super surprising chromatic line going up with these crazy chords, and then ending on like, we don't quite know where on this B minor chord. I would say it's the most complex of the three ones. So which one did you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.